We have a problem. In 2015, at the United Nations Convention on Climate Change in Paris, 140 countries signed what has become colloquially known as the Paris Agreement. Now, this agreement is the single most important diplomatic treaty in climate history. For in it, all 140 signatories pledged to achieve net zero carbon emissions by 2050. This promise means that each country has to balance 100% of its carbon emissions with an equivalent amount of carbon removals from the atmosphere. Now, the scale of this undertaking is enormous. In order to achieve net zero, we have to remove more than 500 gigatons, that's 500 billion tons of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere in the next 25 years. Put in economic terms, that means we have to create more than $25 trillion of carbon credits, more than $1 trillion each and every year. And therein lies the problem. Because in 2023, we created only $3 billion of nature-based carbon credits. Now, a billion is a big number, but a trillion is a huge number. And we're about a thousand times short of where we need to be to stay on track. So how do we solve this problem? How do we plug this gap? Well, we have to create a world where it's more economically beneficial to countries and to landowners to preserve and protect our natural heritage than it is to exploit our natural heritage. In other words, it has to be more profitable to preserve and protect a tree than it is to cut it down for timber or turn it into agricultural grazing land. And therein lies the rub, because today, that's not the case. The good news is we figured out how to create a new operating paradigm that links natural information, information about the earth itself, with financial information to turn carbon into a new type of financial asset that can be traded at scale in the global markets on venues such as the New York Stock Exchange or NASDAQ. And we did so with four basic steps. First, we recognized the carbon credits are just data. The carbon itself is real, but it's locked away in the land. It's sequestered by the natural life. And so we can't trade it like we trade crude oil or pork bellies, or orange juice, or any other type of commodity. We can only trade information about the carbon. So in a very real sense, a carbon credit is the very information that it's composed of. And so utilizing modern advances in computing, AI, and machine learning, it's possible to fuse hundreds of millions of data points together about the carbon stocks and flows of the natural world, and to distill that down into a single nugget of digital truth, which we call an environmental attribute. And we can take those environmental attributes and we can add three new data layers to them to turn them into tradable financial instruments. First, we have to add a common language to talk about carbon. In the past, information about carbon was stored in over 150 registries scattered around the globe. And each of those registries was independently operated, stored its data in unique formats and different formats, and there was no commonality. And so it was like a modern day Tower of Babel. To create a truly global market in carbon, we need to create a common language to describe the carbon, which is called a data taxonomy. And that data taxonomy allows us to describe any carbon created anywhere by anybody at any time using a common language. Next, we needed to create a unique identifier to track each and every unit of carbon, not only so we can track who has bought and sold it, but more critically, to ensure that each credit is unique 
because each spot on the Earth can only create a single credit at a time. And since carbon credits are just data, without being able to verify the uniqueness of those credits, fraudsters could create credits out of thin air and sell them on to unsuspecting buyers. And that diminishes the trust in the marketplace and drives the price down, which is counter to our goal. Thirdly, we need to recognize that not all carbon credits are created equal. Some have very high quality underlying data and others have no underlying data at all. And so we need a rating system similar to a FICO score for carbon so that we can price each and every credit individually according to its own unique characteristics. Because if we're not able to do that, then we have to price all carbon at the lowest common denominator. In other words, we have to assume that all carbon is garbage and then we have to assign a garbage price to it. And so in the end, by taking these environmental attributes and combining it with a common language, a unique identifier, a rating system designed specifically for carbon, we're able to create a negotiable financial instrument. It's like putting the last piece of the puzzle down to create a full picture. And we can plug that instrument into the existing infrastructure of the global financial markets, instantly creating a $25 trillion market in carbon and ensuring our path forward to net zero. In so doing, we've shattered the conventional wisdom that conservation and capitalism are mutually incompatible. By harnessing the profit motive, we've actually ensured that we will achieve our net zero pathway. And we've ensured that going forward, there's a new operating paradigm where it is more profitable to preserve and protect our natural heritage than it is to exploit it. Now, more than ever, nature has value. Thank you.